There we go. All right. So cool. So we're on day three of Rahab and we'll get through what we can. It's not super long, but it's, it's a good size lesson. Mm -hmm. uh, prayer requests. Who's got prayer requests? Keep the Moore family in prayer. Uh, passing of Cleveland Moore. His service is at the church on the seventh. I want to, is it the 17th? Eight, mm. 17th, Friday, the seventh. No, sorry. Saturday, the 18th at 11 a.m. Saturday. Oh, there's Michelle. Saturday, the 18th. Mm. And then right after that, we're giving out the turkeys. So keep us in prayer, too, because we are going to have a very busy weekend. So it's not going to be a repass, I take it. Just yes, gonna they're be... doing a repass, too. They're having it catered because our kitchen isn't available, but they're bringing the food in and having the repass right after. I'm like, OK, we need to have them out of there. Right? <laughs> but we'll be in that back room. So it's just going to be kind of chaotic. But um, oh, so that means somebody all the clothes... may or may not have misread the flyer I had put out and. I won't mention names, <laughs> uh -huh. but that happened. So it's okay. We'll figure it out. Like they can see me because I can't see myself. We can I can't hear see you. yourself either. But you can't see, see me, right? Yeah. No, but that happened you. to Teresa and Alicia so far. So maybe it just take, there you are. Oh, we see you. Okay. So, tell right. Timothias, we say thank you. Timotheus, okay. Oh, Timotheus, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yeah, that that was from that was from Pastor Turner. He didn't come up with that one. <laughs> Gosh, that's funny. Yeah. <laughs> well, we just like we just hit record, so we we're just doing prayer requests right now. Okay. So, if anybody else, I just said the Moore family. Anyone else? Any other prayer requests, Diane or Lois? No? Okay. Mm. Doing all right thus far. This lift Larry up. Um, okay. This is a tough season for him with his immune system and everything. Oh, Just, yeah. Um, yeah. Pray that he can stay healthy and everything. We were just talking about that because the last two holidays, he's not been able to... Uh, pretty much participate because he's been he's gotten sick because you know of the environment and his immune system so just mm -hmm. just keep him lifted up in prayer mm. so does he wear a mask still oh uh, yeah he has to wow mm -hmm. yeah he, does he keep like um air purifiers or diffuser anything in the house to kind of help with his respiratory system is uh, not so much as home as being out, mm. you know, because when you're out, people are coughing, they're sneezing, mm. uh, yeah. you know, and people aren't masked up like they were before. So mm -hmm. uh, that is more so when he's away from home than at home. Mm. So. Yeah. Right. Michelle, and how's your mom? Oh, uh, pretty much, you know, the same. She's getting a little bit of help from the aide. The aide was there today. The aide comes two days a week. And, you know, she has some stuff for to help out around the house. She saw her physical therapist. Physical therapist had her walking up and down the outside of the apartment. Oh so she was, she was putting on some steps. So that's okay. always good, you know. And, um, yeah, so we'll see about her trying to get the epidural shots to kind of help with that. But. She's mm. holding her own, you know, but thank you. And she always says hi, because I tell her all the time, <laughs> you guys are wishing her well and saying hello. And mm -hmm. she always says, tell the, you know, tell the ladies, I appreciate it. And, and you know, I'm doing all right. Awesome. Well, I, I, I can't wait till she comes and join us and she can look <laughs> I know. and yes. see each yeah. one of us <laughs> pretty soon. <laughs> And say, oh, that's the one that never shows up, huh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, you deserve whether or not you're gonna you're gonna like it, because you know how the older people get, the bolder people get. So yeah. <laughs> hello. 
I'm moving into that category. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, I don't think you ever left it. <laughs> no, I, there I it see is. How the, the Reese is reserved because I know there's some things that I, I mm. would hear and I would be like, what? Wait a minute. And you know, but Teresa has, yeah, she, she's mellow. She's chill. Mm -hmm. She's chill. Mm -hmm. Don't tell all my right. secrets of me. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Watch out, you'll be volunteered for something. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, yes, man. Lord. Oh, Lord. I sign you up. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm what? What? I'm doing what? <laughs> what? That is so funny. Oh, I I, you know, I was just I was just really thinking about uh, I saw a sister. Um, coffee had her birthday and I can't believe she's that old and she looks so good so, good, huh? so healthy and I'm like Lord just keep me <laughs> to that point I know <laughs> I, I know. mean mm -hmm. you know in my right mind able to get up get dressed well, yeah wear heels. Exactly. I'm looking at these people her and sister um, Peyton wearing heels I'm like what <laughs> I know <laughs> I'm like, yeah. give me my flats. <laughs> A wedge when I'm dressed up, okay? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm wearing podiatrist shoes. I don't <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, me and hookahs are best good friends. Yes, yes. You don't think so. Mm. Uh, Definitely. <laughs> oh, that is goodness. funny. Well, it was nice to finally okay. meet Gail, too, the other week. Oh yeah, she's just, that's my longtime friend. She and th it was the first time she's been away since she's been sick. Wow! So she had a good time. She it was uneventful. She called. She was happy to see good everybody and meet everybody and get away. And um, even happier that uh, she called me the next week and said mentally and physically it was a good trip oh. for her. She had nothing happen or anything so praise god that was a blessing That's yeah good. sorry i missed you teresa i was out yeah. i was in southern california visiting um our daughter and when i got back they said you missed teresa and her friend. <laughs> I, I was know. so sorry and yeah. i was with my i was with my through there again I know. I was with All my right. grandson and I kept saying, she didn't even tell nobody she was coming. Oh, <laughs> was oh, I got yeah. back. Oh, yeah. Teresa was here. I said, I dare her. <laughs> Harriet was the funniest, though, because uh, I had called and I was talking to uh, my brother and she was there. I think she was getting fish. Uh, fish dinner or something <laughs> and so I talked to her and she was like oh yeah yeah, yeah. so she said okay we'll talk soon I said yeah I'll see you soon went right over her head you know, <laughs> up. so when I saw her at church I said she said I just talked to you <laughs> <laughs> definitely it's funny I love okay. my business up there. I'll work it out so I can get that way again. Good. Yeah. Yeah. It's always fun. All right. Who's got scripture? Who's got prayer? Ah. <laughs> ah. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I know Michelle got hers open. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I have to do, I got to do double duty on Sunday mornings. That's right. <laughs> Work. But you do it so well. Does. Oh, you're sweet to say. You really are. Yeah, you do. You do. Someone oh, has scripture? <laughs> I know. I'm waiting. I got Psalms 15. Okay, go ahead. Thank you, Sister Teresa. <laughs> <laughs> The Lord who may dwell in your sanctuary, who may live on your holy hill, he he whose walk is blameless and who does, does what is righteous, who speaks the truth from his heart and has no slander on his tongue, who does his neighbor no wrong and casts no slur on his fellow man, right. who despises a vile man but honors those who fear the Lord, 
who keeps his oath, even if even when it hurts, who lends his money without unser usury, mm -hmm. U S U R Y, and does usury? not accept a mm -hmm. bribe against the innocent. He who does these things will never be shaken. And that's the entire verse of Psalms 15. And that's out of NIV. Amen. Yes. Okay. Yes. Our Heavenly Father, we come to you today. And we're just so thankful, Lord, that, you know, we're here once again. You know, the November this year is closing in really quick. And Lord, as we close out this year and we come close to we just ask you you know this is a month that we're supposed to be thankful and give yes. thanksgiving we just want to be able to lift up your name and praise you as we go forth we ask you to look upon us and guide us and strengthen us i have any father yes. for those who you know are in that we come in contact with we ask you to just bless those people yes. and, you know, give us the word to share your gospel to those yes, who Lord. don't know, who are just confused. So whether it's friend, whether it's family or people that we just met, met, we just ask you to help us to be able to share during this time the things that you've done for us and mm -hmm. how you could do the same for them my heavenly father just encourage us as we go forth we ask you to look upon each one of the sisters that are here today Thank you me. know their pains and you know their prayer requests yes, we lord. just ask you now lord just to come in and answer mm -hmm. those prayers give them strength where they need strength we know that you know the weather is changing and it affects all of us but we just ask you to give a special anointing to Larry so that he will stay strong during this time. And he will be able to come around family and be able to have that fellowship that he needs. We ask you to pray yes. for, you know, Michelle's mom. Keep her strong. Keep her mind awake and alert. Thanks. And then I want to also pray for my sisters, Elois and Diane, who are, you know, experiencing health problems as they go forth. We just ask you to put your arms of protection around them and strengthen them as they go forward. Lord, you know each one of us that probably did not share what's going on in our life, but you know what it is. We just ask you to encourage us, strengthen us as we go forward. All these things we ask in our son's name and his for his sake. Do we pray? Amen. 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 Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate the scripture and the prayer. Thank you. All right, Miss Rahab. <laughs> All right, I did try to make the font bigger, mm -hmm. but that's okay. I don't mind reading. Okay, so day three, a conquered kingdom. So last week, or last week, last time, we <laughs> talked a little bit about. Um, the her house mm -hmm. how it was and that everything mm -hmm. around her house was destroyed and that so at the end of the lesson i found a little thing um online a picture and i think a little blurbage i don't remember mm -hmm. it's at the end of the thing so if if we make it to that section today mm -hmm. we can go so <clears throat> <clears throat> so this yeah, I, at, I also looked it up and they had different variations of how they did the house was built. And I was just saying that was really interesting because I yeah. never imagined it looking like it did. And the ruins of it today. I mean, I guess, you know, with mm -hmm. everything going on in Israel and everything, I don't I'm not mm -hmm. sure what's where, but they had a picture of the ruins of it, of, you know, what was left. Uh -huh. And um, but again, it may it may be gone too. I can't imagine all the stuff that's disappearing now. Okay, so it says in Joshua six, we see the details of Israel's conquest of Jericho through God's supernatural dealings. The walls of Jericho came tumbling down, and the army of Israel marched in. Everyone in the city was devoted to destruction. Only Rahab and her family survived. 
yet they too were conquered by Israel. Their faith in Jehovah made their hearts a conquered kingdom as well. What a contrast though. There really are ultimately only two options in life. Either we will bow our knee to Christ and surrender, or we will bow our knee to him by force. But sooner or later, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Philippians 2, 10 and 11. Amen to that. May we join with Rahab in bowing by the choice of faith. Joshua 6 opens with Israel laying siege to Jericho. God had led them to this point. He had parted the Jordan River for them just like he parted the Red Sea for the generation before them. He had fed them for 40 years on manna, but once they had entered the land and eaten some of its produce, the manna ceases. Retreat is not an option, for the Jordan will not open for them to run. To do nothing is not an option, for unless they move forward and conquer, they will have no food. Now they must act in faith on all that God has promised them. Read Joshua 6, 1 through 5, and respond to the questions that follow. So this is Joshua 6, 1 through 5. Now Jericho was shut up inside and outside because of the people of Israel. None went out and none came in. And the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have given Jericho into your hand with its king and mighty men of valor. You shall march around the city, all the men of war going around the city once. Thus shall you do for six days. Seven priests shall bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark. On the seventh day you shall march around the city seven times, and the priests shall blow the trumpets. And when they make a long blast, <coughs> excuse me, with the ram's horn, when you hear the sound of the trumpet, then all the people shall shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city will fall down flat, and the people shall go up, everyone straight before him. Okay, taking into account ancient methods of warfare, what does verse 1 suggest about the first phase of the conquest of Jericho? So verse 1 is now Jericho was shut up inside and outside because of the people of Israel. None went out and none came in. The first phase of the conquest was, sounds like no entrance, no exit. There was no way in, no way out, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. First phase, so that was the first phase of their conquest, I guess. And sure. I guess also what he told them to do, to march around, you know, and, uh, on the seventh day, what to do and to shout and the walls will come down. And that was his promise, you know, his promise to them also. Yeah. Well, I guess. Well, I would be, yeah, go, go ahead. ahead. Mm -hmm. No, go ahead. I was just going to say, I guess that's a means by which to fortify your position, you know. Sure. It's, yeah, it's to keep. Prop them inside. Right, right. And if you have people that are able to leave, then that's going to be a weak spot where if they can leave, maybe somebody can get in. So you just fortify the gates and say, this is this is our stronghold. This is where we stay and we fight. So it's to strengthen your position. That's what I think. Like when yes. for that old Roach Motel commercial, they check in, but they don't <laughs> check out. out. <laughs> Ooh, yes. <laughs> and can you imagine how the people felt that were inside and they yeah. could oh, hear the soldiers yeah. marching around and, you know, that whole time for seven days and you can't mm -hmm. get out, you can't go in. That means, you know, there's no right. food coming in or going out and you, yeah. you're there. You're just mm -hmm. there. Yeah, That's and like right. they said, God wasn't going to part the Jordan like he parted the Red Sea, mm -hmm. you know, when when the Israelites were leaving Egypt, and oh my goodness. All right, what is God's promise to Joshua in verse 2? 
Uh, verse 2 says, And the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have given Jericho into your hand with its king and mighty men of valor. Hmm. I'm sorry. That's, I answered that part, part of it. <laughs> I think. I don't know. That's okay. I mean, it kind of says it. His God's promise to Joshua was... See, I have given Jericho into your hand. So he's delivering Jericho over to him mm -hmm. with its king and mighty men of valor. You know, I think along with that promise also has to come faith because Joshua believed yeah. in what God said. And if he didn't have that faith, he wouldn't have done what God had requested him to do. So, you know, this was his promise. It's just like, you know, you do what I ask you to do and you will be blessed, you know. And, um, you know, I feel that he was because he was faithful. Right. Well, and God reassuring him too, you know, go, and which he does to all of us when we go into these storms or battles or, you know, whatever it is that, you know, things that we go through we can also rely on God's promises to us, you know? So we go into these things, even though we might freak out or worry or whatever. I know I do still, even though that, you know, God's, we, we can already claim the victory. You know, we're going through it for Christ's sake and, and, you know, we already have his promises that he will never leave us or forsake us. And, you know, almost reassuring Joshua, you know, see, I've given Jericho into your hand. So he had already promised him that. So going in, you know, he had that confidence and that promise and that reassurance from God. And, and we still have the same thing today. We just forget, <laughs> you know. Yeah when we're going into a situation and it's like, Oh Lord, <laughs> pray for me. I'm going in, <laughs> you know, you it. Have, yeah, you have to be steadfast. You know, I just really feel yeah. that you, you know, when you go through this, we know the promises of what, you know, God has given us, but yet and still we want to do our own thing. We don't stay fast. We just kind of, you know, even though we know the promises, well, let me just speak, speak for myself. I know I don't always, you know. I don't either. Do no, no, right. right. Yeah. That's why we need Jesus every minute of every day because whew, I'm no good on my own. I've proven that. All right. What was God's strategy for phase two of the conquest of the city? Verses three through five. So verses three through five says, you shall march around the city, all the men of war going around the city once. Thus shall you do for six days. Seven priests shall bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark. On the seventh day, you shall march around the city seven times, and the priests shall blow the trumpets. And when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, when you hear the sound of the trumpet, then all the people shall shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city will fall down flat, and the people shall go up, everyone straight before him. Mm. So... What was the strategy for that? What was God's strategy? He was making it clear that they had to depend on him. Mm -hmm. You know, that was mm -hmm. the first thing. It's like, because mm -hmm. just us thinking about the strategy, we'd be like, uh, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Are those on. my only choices? <laughs> yeah, hold on. But, you know, wait, wait, I, was, <laughs> I was like, this is what it is. This is what is, I'm doing this. I'm in control of this situation. <laughs> you know? yeah, walk around where seven times? Wait, with these mm. sandals on? Oh, my right? God. Yeah. Could you imagine their poor feet? <laughs> <laughs> and that wasn't a small city to go around no. like seven times. Oh, 
Yeah, yeah. seven days. So it, what, took a whole day each time? Like, I don't know. That just, wow. Some of it could be just, you know, how obedient you're going to be. You know, like, yeah. it doesn't matter how crazy it sounds to you. Are you going to do what I say to do? Are you exactly. Gonna Are you going to take me at my word and do it? You know, even I've told you if I told you to twirl around six times, will you do it? No. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> that yeah, see my thing. Yeah, they did without complaining. You don't read anywhere where they complain and say, you know, like we, like I would have done with, do I have yeah. my feet hurt? You know, just <laughs> right. like, they yeah. just went on and did it. You know, it's like oh, seven times in a row. <laughs> <laughs> <No>. <laughs> How many days? What well, if I two. do three? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, it reminds me of like two, uh, like Michelle was saying, uh, <laughs> that part where I think he was a leper and God told him to go dip himself in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How mm -hmm. many times it was, wasn't it six or seven times? Mm -hmm. And this, the, the, the last oh, time yeah. you come up, you'll be healed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm And he, he questioned it from what I remember. I can't remember where it was. I just remember mm -hmm. that. Yeah, I remember, yeah. yeah. All right. What if that, oh, can I, can, I, can I introduce Jess? Yeah. Now it's interesting because I'm taking it, you know, six days in the creation man was created on the sixth day six is supposed to be the number of man you know surprise right. that signifies man and huh. god had them marching around the men of war to march around uh on the six was it the six uh it says uh seven six day. days yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and go once for six days then aren't a priest is supposed to be the go between between the people and God, because in the tabernacle, you got the priests mm -hmm. that have to go in and the mm -hmm. people bring their offer. Okay. So seven is God's perfect number, so mm -hmm. to so to speak. And so he had the priest, and it's to go around the ark. It says there before the ark, they were to bear seven trumpets and horns before the ark. That's the ark of the covenant. Yes. So it's mm -hmm. kind of like those priests are coming before the ark which is the representation of god being with that you know with them that's why the ark was so you know revered and that's why they carried it everywhere you know mm -hmm. so i'm thinking i don't know how but i'm thinking in theological thinking people's minds they may feel that that seven days is represent still obedience but it's representation of God going through that decent and in order kind of mm -hmm, manner mm -hmm. that he does things. Mm -hmm. And um, just are they going to carry that out in that way? So I'm just thinking those seven days, the seven times, the priest doing it, going around the ark. Mm -hmm. I, my mind can't think of all that, but I'm thinking there's a little something. A you know, parallel between the two. Yeah. That's a good point. Two. Yeah. Um, so mm -hmm. that that's all. But ultimately obedience, like what y'all was saying, obedience to it, you know. Right. So can it, you uh, go ahead. Can you imagine uh, the people of Jericho listening to this? Don't you <laughs> right. Think that that's what yeah, Alicia was saying like, that. Like, like what uh, is going on? What, yeah. They walking in circles, you know. Exactly. <laughs> trying to figure it out yeah. but at the same time probably being scared to death because scared they don't know death. what's coming yeah. down the yes. fearful and, yeah. Yeah. and, and yet and still going through all of that they still did not look to God for him to for him to save them they right. didn't they didn't pray they didn't ask for repentance they just lived in fear for those seven days you know mm -hmm. and, and, I, and I just it. Yeah, and Rahab was up to hell. I don't have nothing to worry about. That's right. <laughs> I'm good. That's right. <laughs> she Absolutely. The furthest, she the furthest away from any of all of that, you know? <laughs> she wasn't there at the Red Sea or nothing to know any of that. Uh -huh. She's like, she I got my, I got my scarlet rope hanging out my window. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's, it's still amazing how God just he always 
because of the control that he has of every situation. And when we look at that, yeah, um, you know, everything is, was in place. You know, we yes. sitting here mm -hmm. reading, reading it, putting the puzzle pieces together. Right. They were living it and not sure how the puzzle pieces it's were going to work until it was mm -hmm. complete. So, yeah, that's true. You that know, so when true. we get to running around here trying not to, not able to figure out what's going on, mm -hmm. just sit back, relax, breathe a minute, and put our focus where it needs to be. Talk to the Lord. You know, mm -hmm. and like, okay, I'm, I'm gonna let you go ahead and handle this because uh, I clearly know I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> exactly. Yes. <laughs> Very true. You know, boy. Thank you. Uh, Amen. That was so true. Mm. Good point. <laughs> All right. What effect, oh Lord, what effect do you think Israel's marches around the city and the trumpet blasts and shouts of the people had on the army of Jericho? I think we kind of talked about that. I think they were terrified. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I was going to say the trumpet thing where my, you know, we were talking about revelation earlier, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. sounding of the trumpets and mm -hmm. the number seven, that kind of reminds mm -hmm. me a little bit, you know, of, of revelation. Yeah. I mean, I don't know what correlation or parallel it might oh, have. Uh, right, right. That's mm -hmm. just kind of what I think of when I hear that. All right. Verse one tells us that Jericho was tightly shut because of Israel. This means the gates were closed and everyone was hidden within the walls of the city. Oh, right, because their houses were built into the walls, remember? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Oh, God, that's even more nerve-wracking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this reflects... Look out your window. <laughs> oh, God, I just can't even imagine. Right. Oh, whoo. Just start that is already. Me. Mm. This reflects the fact that Jericho's army didn't believe they were able to win a direct fight with Israel. Without modern methods of warfare, a walled city was easy to defend and difficult to penetrate. Mm -hmm. Often the most effective method of attacking such a city was to surround it, cutting off supplies of food and water, okay, and starve the inhabitants out. Oh, gosh. Jeez, starvation <laughs> would eventually force them to come out and fight. Fight with what? They would be weak. weak. Yeah. We do not know how long this phase of the conquest lasted, but God uses Jericho's reaction to encourage, encourage Joshua that he had indeed given the city into their hands. Phase two of God's plan was equally important. Specific instructions were given to Israel requiring obedience and faith. There you go, Michelle. They were to march around the city walls carrying the ark before them. Can you imagine what Jericho's soldiers were thinking? Well, if they're like, remember when David and them were carrying the ark and the mm. one guy, so they, they messed up, they weren't holding it or doing something the way God had said. Okay. And... God smote the guy instead of David, right? Man, mm -hmm. how angry he was and just mm -hmm. smote that guy, right? He touched it or did something or held it with, yeah. yeah. He touched, uh, yeah. Exactly. So can you imagine what Jericho's soldiers were thinking? <sighs> no. They had mm -hmm. heard of God's miraculous deliverance of Israel in the parting of the Red Sea. They were accustomed to fighting soldiers but how could they fight a God who could part waters? Ha, huh, you can't. Yeah. This army was acting like none they had ever seen. And with each day, their confidence was further eroded as fear filled their hearts. Mm -hmm. What God, it's so true. What God had instructed, Joshua and the people obeyed. See that obedience, like think, thinking, no matter how crazy it sounds to you, God said, do this. You know, mm -hmm. when the march was finished and the trumpet sounded, the people shouted in unison and God caused the walls of Jericho to fall to the ground. Once the wall was breached, the soldiers ushed in. I may have Rushed gotten in. the R. <laughs> <laughs> that may Rushed have been in. a typo. <laughs> 
they ushed in and the city was quickly taken. Only Rahab's part of the wall remained standing and only her family was allowed to live. Well, she was obedient too. Mm-hmm. She did exactly what they told her to do because mm-hmm. they told her if you don't, you know, if you come out, if you say anything, if you do this, this, and that, all bets are off. And Remember? I like the way she and me, you remember when they were leaving and they told her to, you know, have that red rope out. And she did it immediately. It's like, immediately. Oh, you, guys are, you guys are gone. Here's the rope. No, not have to tell me twice. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be having that thing. Here it is. Already yeah. done. Yeah. <laughs> That's so funny. All right. Read Joshua 6, 15 through what, where are we in time? Oh, we're good. 6, 18. Read Joshua 6, 15 through 25 and answer the questions that follow. On the seventh day, they rose early at the dawn of day and marched around the city in the same manner seven times. It was all, excuse me, it was only on that day that they marched around the city seven times. And at the seventh time, when the priests had blown the trumpets, Joshua said to the people, shout for the Lord has given you the city and the city and all that is within it shall be devoted to the Lord for destruction. Only Rahab the prostitute and all who are with her in her house shall live because she hid the messengers whom we sent. But you keep yourselves from the things devoted to destruction, lest when you have devoted them, you take any of the devoted things and make the camp of Israel a thing for destruction and bring trouble upon it. But all silver and gold and every vessel of bronze and iron are holy to the Lord, they shall go into the treasury of the Lord. So the people shouted and the trumpets were blown. As soon as the people heard the sound of the trumpet, the people shouted a great shout and the wall fell down flat so that the people went up into the city, every man straight before him and they captured the city. Then they devoted all in the city to destruction, sorry, both men and women, young and old, oxen, sheep, and donkeys with the edge of the sword. Woo! But yeah. to the two men who had spied out the land, Joshua said, go into the prostitute's house and bring out from there the woman and all who belong to her as you swore to her. So the young men who had been spies went in and brought out Rahab and her father and mother and brothers and all who belonged to her. And they brought all her relatives and put them outside the camp of Israel. And they burned the city with fire and everything in it. Only the silver and gold and the vessels of bronze and of iron they put into the treasury of the house of the Lord. But Rahab the prostitute and her father's household and all who belonged to her, Joshua saved alive. And she has lived in Israel to this day but she hid the messengers because she hid the messengers whom Joshua sent to spy out Jericho. And you had to think if she lives in a little thing, they must've been, you know, it's all her family and her father's household and all these people in this little place Mm -hmm. while all this was going on. Mm-hmm. They kind of had to be freaking out too. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Even though they knew, you know, I mean, Rahab, even with her faith, you know, that little bit of faith they talked about that she had that, you yeah. know, it, that was put to the test. And she was like, I'm not going anywhere. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> All right. What were Joshua's instructions about the city and Rahab? Verse 17. Uh, Verse 17 says, And the city and all that is within it shall be devoted to the Lord for destruction. Only Rahab the prostitute and all who are with her in her house shall live because she hid the messengers whom we sent. That's the answer. That is the answer. That pretty much says it right there. Yeah. Yeah. Can add to it. Mm -hmm. Just as a promise, just as you know. Uh, What did the people do to Jericho? Verses 21 and 24. So 21 says, Then they devoted all in the city to destruction, both men and women, young and old, oxen, sheep, and donkeys with the edge of the sword. Good grief. 
and they burned the city with fire 24 and everything in it only the silver and gold and the vessels of bronze and of iron they put into the treasury of the house of the lord all right i'm gonna put a question to you okay mm -hmm. How can a good and loving God have those people all killing children and, and animals and all of that? Why is that? Why is that tolerated? Is that a good and loving God that does that? Yeah, that's my question to y'all. You know, you're going to hear people that say that. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So, so all the time. why is God killing, killing men, women and children and animals? Why did they have to go in and do that? Couldn't they spare the children? What's our answer to that? I don't, yeah. I think we, oh, go ahead. No, you go ahead. You go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody go ahead. I just, um, for me, is is if you look at it like um, a bruise on an apple or an infection, Mm -hmm. you've got to clean it all out. Mm -hmm. You've got to clear it out so you can start new. Mm -hmm. um, even the children, but the children were raised by the parents and the parents were corrupt. Mm -hmm. so the children, that they knew corruption. Mm -hmm. I think the only ones that probably didn't would probably have been a baby, but um, I don't know. It's kind of like when Noah in the ark, when he loaded out the, the earth. Right. Mm -hmm. right. And, and Teresa, why would it be important not to have that corruption be amongst the people of Israel? Because they could easily pick it up. Mm -hmm. If they're not, if, you know, the thing of it is, is that even with us, it's a struggle for us to just mm -hmm. stay focused on God's word. Yeah. And if you were given direct instruction on not to uh, bring certain things in, and as from us studying the Bible, we know that mm -hmm. they started picking up the ways that weren't of mm -hmm. God. Right, mm -hmm. right. And if you leave just a little bit, mm -hmm. you know, it's mm -hmm. just like a little sore. If you need just a little bit room, Mm -hmm. that infection mm -hmm. can get in there and spread mm -hmm. you know because at the end of the day we all still human so mm -hmm. i mean I, that's my take i don't know no i i think to yeah. just hit on it because i think it's good mm -hmm. yeah i mean if god chose these hebrews and these israelites to be his that he was going to use these group of people to show who he is and what he is through through creation and going all the way forward with Abraham, then it was important that they are the, the example. And we know even many times they still fail, but through that, God even shows his love of forgiveness because he forgives them. They go through judgment. He forgives them. But it's important that what, what Teresa said, no corruption, trying to keep them as spotless and pure as he possibly could, you know, in, in that way. So I, and you know, God is a God of love, but he's a God who also reserves the right for judgment. Mm -hmm. He is, he's, mm -hmm. he's a judging God. We forget that. I know I, I forget mm -hmm. that sometimes too. He's not just love. He's, he's mm -hmm. God, you know, he can have it the way he wants to have it mm -hmm. and judge who he wants to judge. So it's 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 that and i think teresa hit on it no corruption can't yeah. have corruption mm -hmm. yeah yeah i like the example of that one rotten fruit how it will mess up everything everything mm -hmm. yes. yes and that is yes. so true mm -hmm. well right. too i mean look at how many chances god kept giving them he was sending messengers to tell them listen if you do not repent and turn to God and obey God. This is what he said he's going to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And these people just are like, yeah, whatever. We don't even want to hear it. Mm -hmm. And they kept on. I mean, look at all the horrible things that were happening in Sodom and Gomorrah, mm -hmm. you know, and, and God would send these people and say, you know, you tell them that the Lord there, you know, Lord, your God said, 
if they don't do this, if this happens, this is exactly what I'm going to do. And I'm going to kill your, your men, women, and children. I'm going to yeah. kill your animals. I'm going to wipe out everything you've ever known. If this, if you do not obey me, if you do, if you continue mm -hmm. to, right. you know, break my commandments and, and, you know, worship idols and all those things. And so, you know, there was many times in the Bible where God in the Old Testament, where mm -hmm. God talked about burning things down or destroying mm -hmm. or causing, you know, these these attacks and wars and allowing this stuff to happen because he was angered by their behavior. And so, you know, I think to you, they get to that point, like, you know, with Noah and the ark of God was so angry and it was like you know what i'm wiping everybody out except mm -hmm. for noah and his family uh -huh. and then you know he said okay well the rainbow's a promise that i will never wipe it. i won't wipe anything out by flood anymore <laughs> i won't do that one yeah. again but you know he's still i mean i i think about what's going on in israel today and, you know, this is what God, you know, if you read God's word, it is horrible that, that men, women, and children have to die. I'm not saying it's not, but, you know, I think that it's been so war torn for so long and there's so much corruption and violence and awful things happening in Israel and, and, in you know, not just Israel, there's countries all over that it happens, but you know, God's a God of his word. And so people tend to get this shock when, oh my God, how could God let this happen? He told you, read the, <laughs> read the Bible. You know, he yeah. warned us. Well, that's All the problem. Of it. Mm -hmm. That's the problem, getting yes. away from God. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Like when you get away from God, the further away you get away from him, the Ooh. less you're aware of what he's told you, what you may know. Say that. If you think about the fact that, okay, I taught my kids. Well, my kids, they like, okay, we're not going to do this. I'm not doing this. So they kids don't know anything. And then their kids don't know anything. So mm -hmm. here you go. And um, even with that question, it wasn't just um, the fact of uh, Jericho. God does not discriminate, okay? Right. Mm -hmm. He does not do that. Mm -hmm. Okay, you, some of some of the people that he dealt with very closely were taken out. People are being taken mm -hmm. out all the time because yeah. of disobedience. And you yeah. push him to a point. It's not like this is just the norm for me. You know, mm -hmm. I'm just going to decide to do this today. You, yeah. It's just like, your kids they push you to a point you'd be like okay here we go yeah and then they have the nerve right. to look offended when you've already worn them <laughs> <laughs> you know and all you gotta this act stuff. like that <laughs> yeah right <laughs> why you gotta act like that <laughs> I, I, yeah. <laughs> and, I you, and you can trace you can trace this sin all the way back you know to abraham and what happened with wow. you know his mm -hmm. son and, and uh and I know my sister always says, uh, Elois, what was that? There'll never be peace in the East. Yeah. She was no, saying. No. no peace in the Middle East. Yeah, she was saying. Mm -hmm. And I say, and you look at today and it's just like, it's been, the war has been going on forever. Forever. Yes. You know, and it's not, and it won't be until, you know, Jesus comes back. Right. And, uh, yeah so i know it is unfortunate you know but again like they said in the beginning you're either gonna bow you're gonna you know you're either gonna get on your knee by faith or by force yeah and but eventually every knee shall bow and every tongue confess and so can you imagine you know i keep trying to imagine <laughs> Jesus, you know, every, you know, after rain, you know, after it rains and it's like the sun shines through the cloud. I keep saying, is it now, Lord? I know. <laughs> it has to look like a perfect time for him to show up. 
<laughs> I know. And I'm like, yeah. oh my gosh. And but I mean, just imagine believers, unbelievers, they say every need. Every you know, need. The animals, everything is gonna it's it just whoa. That's just so much for me to comprehend. <laughs> Yeah, it's an amazing thought, but it doesn't, the thought doesn't even come close to what it would actually be yeah. like. But you yeah. can't and these fathom are, it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. wow. Crazy. That's yeah. Why it's so well, there's not us. much. Oh, what was that? I was going to say, that's why it's so important for us to still keep sharing his yes. work and about his business. Because that is true. People, mm -hmm. people don't, a lot of people don't get it. Uh, yeah, and just because we're not being bombed up or anything, don't mean that it ain't a bunch of chaos as we know that's yeah. going right here and right now. Yes. So the fact that we need to be prayed up, I was talking to this young man at uh, Fam Fest. Uh, we were cracking up because I don't know how we got to talking about revivals and prayer meetings when we were growing up. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And I told, and I was telling him, I said, you know, and I said, it it really applies to today. The fact that we don't have revivals and the fact that we don't mm -hmm. have, why, why are we just having a watch meeting on New Year's Eve? Right. You know, we need to be praying, you know, I remember specifically, well, the church I'm attending, they just went through this prayer thing that we were praying and fasting. You know, mm -hmm. and we need to do that because uh, this world is in turmoil. We're in a mess. And yeah. a lot yes. of people go about their day and they just feel like it's okay, but it's not okay. It's not At least okay. in my head, it's not okay. <laughs> and, it's, ah, and it's maybe. important. You know, I agree. You know, we need to come together as a church and, you know, pray and fast. You know, Lord, this is what we, you know, you know, direct us, show us where you want us to go. We need to come together and pray. I, I don't know. Yeah, you know, like you said. It, doesn't or, even, it could be us. It don't have to be the church. Yeah. It don't have to be the whole church. It just needs to be right. a group. Basis. And you have, you have somebody. It could be, mm -hmm. where say, three or more gathered together. That's right. You know, if you start, you can't always wait for an organize, organization. Yeah, that's oh, true. God, yeah. yeah. Everyone's always got to excuse. No, you just say the next week we're going to fast for four hours. We're praying about this and let's just do it. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't matter where you are, out of state, in state, doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, you, every Monday, uh, my sisters and I, we get together and pray, you know. Mm -hmm on a regular basis and uh and we do pray for you know we have i haven't fasted with them but you know but you know you're right we don't have to wait for the whole church to do it but we need to come together i think just the leadership need to come together if we don't even though we may not be asking the congregation mm -hmm. then let's do it as the leadership and come together and pray and you know, and fast or whatever, you know, half a day. People or... just start doing it. You got to just yeah. start doing it. Yeah, you just Let have it to set and it'll catch on. Yeah, yeah they'll just, catch up. Just start yeah. doing it. You know, we're doing this for the next week. This is what, you know, mm -hmm. me, like me, that. me are doing yeah. and everything. I know um, we got, and, and the fact that, you're, that you, you guys have prayer every Saturday, that's phenomenal. Yeah, every Monday that is phenomenal. You know, I don't make it all the time, but when I get in there, it is great. You it know, is. Because, yeah. you know, to, to just take that time away from everything else that you're doing it's and just, just focus on spending it, just you know, reaching out, talking with God, and That's even true. though the pastors are speak, speak praying or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, you can go. You it takes me off in to my own conversation with God. Mm -hmm. I don't always do when I'm at home. Mm -hmm. I know people right. have their prayer closets and all of that type of thing. And I do pray and I walk around and stuff, but it's nice just to have that. That's everybody's in that environment. Of it, you know? mm -hmm. So, And I wish that more, because we've now opened it up to people, but you know, nobody's showing up right now, but they are watching online. And it does, even if, you know, whether they're praying on their own at home or they're just sitting there for that hour and getting that, you know, getting that prayer and mm -hmm. 
adding their own prayer into it, but it'll be nice when, you know, because it's, it's a different experience to watch it online and to be there while it's happening. It, it's just different, you know, and so it's, it's still great to be able to watch it online. Um, but, you know, you can experience it both ways. And, and I think that that's, you know, that's one of the things about the internet that I love too, is that, you know, you can, you can share the word, you can pray, you know, it opens up things for Christianity too, you know, not just, you know, you can still fellowship, even though it's not totally the same, it's still, mm -hmm. you know, and even like Teresa was saying of fasting and praying, and you can get on like we do right here. Mm -hmm. and pray and talk about you know and, and just decide hey we're going to fast on this day and get together and pray and you know other people will start to do it let's say our group started to do it then groups you know it might inspire other people other groups of friends or other groups of bible studies or whatever to do the same and and you know it starts to spread because it really brings such great blessings and it just needs to, you know, we are, we're in such a mess. It is, it is so chaotic. Well, we can always just pick a week to do that. You know, we can pick, you know, the weekend before, after Thanksgiving, or even that Thanksgiving weekend, and just say, we're going to pray every day at this time. And we're going to fast from this time to this time. That's something that we can decide to do you know, as a group. And, um, right now I'm on a 30 day fast. So any day and any time works for me. <laughs> no fair. I, I know. No fair. Jump the gun. Okay. <laughs> I have to wait till my stomach growls and unhealthy. Uh, <laughs> man, it's been 12 hours. <laughs> well, I have a feeling. I have a feeling y'all are dragging me into that shut-in fast <laughs> place that I was when we first got Oh boy. <laughs> I can gear myself up for that one. Oh my goodness. That is yeah. So but yeah. And 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 like for the fasting, you know, it doesn't have to be I don't know what I don't know what your fast is. It can be an intermediate intermediate fasting. Mm-hmm. Which is, I know I did that with Alice one, one year, and it was really good. And the first three days was the hardest, I think. And then yeah. after after that, it was like, oh, thank you. you yeah, know. if you can make it through the first three days of, of that, it's, you know, the rest is, is easy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, we should, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll pray about it. And if God leads our group to do it, then. We're going to pick a time. Yeah, there you go. I was we just going to say that, Teresa. Even we don't have to pray about it. You know it. what? It don't even have to be a week. Let's just say maybe next Wednesday. Okay. From 8 to 12. Is Wednesday the fast. from 8 and to 12. You oh, got it. Unless that? you got to take medication or whatever. I'll, I get I mean, well, you still have to just start. Start. So what day is next Wednesday? Um, 15th. The 15th? Okay. Mm -hmm. The 15th. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, we could do it Tuesday. Either day is fine with me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just think it's important to just pick a time. I don't, sometimes it's not good. I, I mean, it's always good to just say, I'm going to do this. But sometimes you got to take baby steps instead of just jumping into it and, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. setting yourself up. And I just think that for me, Let's just commit to something and do it. Just get it started. Mm -hmm. No, I agree. Have to be okay. All right. And then, so. and I think probably, you know, if we decide what do we want to pray about, you know, mm -hmm. and um, as a group, you know, what is it that, you know, family, you know, the country, the world, you know, our churches, so we can, well, you know, we can focus each take, on it. We can each take a different subject or something. Well, we'll text and figure it out. But mm -hmm. now we have our day, either yeah, Wednesday, I think you said. Wednesday the 15th. 
from eight to 12. That's fine with me. Mm -hmm. Look, and I'm going to use the scripture that's on my cup. Be still and know okay there you go all right well i think what we'll do next week will be a very short lesson because we have the rest of this one which is it's a little bit you know yeah so it it's still a little bit to go oh and then our little rahab scarf there so okay so we'll just we'll continue this next week because we've still got a good a good lesson left in this lesson so and it's already 6 42. Okay. okay so i'll just uh so that was good no i really like this lesson i mm -hmm. who knew you know with rahab i had heard the name before we started this lesson i i had heard the name but i've never really remembered what her story was in the bible mm -hmm. and so i've really been enjoying um just this whole this whole story about Rahab and and you know just even that little part that she's in in the Bible can be so huge and so impactful mm -hmm. you know and what mm -hmm. she did and that just that little faith that they said she had you know she wasn't a full-blown Christian or anything like that but she knew of God and she used that little stood on that tiny little bit of faith that she had and look what look what happened you know she was able to save herself her entire family uh and really in the end bow faith instead of by force you know yeah. so she was never the same once once you've been blessed and touched by the lord like that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. come through for you and you actually let it you know accept it you're never the same again you can never be the same after mm -hmm. god has has touched your life like that you know you just you yeah. are never going to be the same i don't care what anyone says but uh, yeah so cool well, all right well it was good seeing all you guys. Yeah, definitely good to Great. see you. Definitely, me too. All right, I'm going to quickly pray us out and we can go and yawn. <laughs> I know we're all tired. <laughs> yawn. I know. <laughs> all right, gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you so much, Lord. We just come to you humble. We come to you grateful and thankful and bowing and and our tongues always confess that jesus is lord and mm -hmm. lord us up this morning and giving us our portion of health and strength for allowing us to see another day that was not promised to us lord and and mm -hmm. bringing us right back here to be able to share your word and grow in our relationship with you and lord we just ask forgiveness of our sins known and unknown and we thank you for your grace your mercy your loving and your patience lord we just need it every minute of every day lord we ask blessing upon all of those that are here that were able to be with us those that yes. will be watching this later those that weren't able to make it and lord we just ask blessing upon all of our families and friends and all that we do in the name of the lord and lord we just thank you for your promises that you know that we read about in the bible and the lessons that we learn and lord we're still standing yeah. these promises is today and and we just thank you for never leaving us never forsaking us and thank you for giving us the victory in you lord we just ask that you not only bless our study and <clears throat> continue to bless us as as we share mm -hmm. your word, but lord this fasting and prayer that we're going to do lord that it that it uh just <clears throat> pleases you and that it blesses many and lord that we're able to touch so many people and and mm -hmm. lord do this for you and that you know we that you just help us to inspire other people and and lord you know we we are so blessed and and you tell us when our cups are full we need to share with other people and lord, that that includes prayer and blessing and all the things that you do for us in our life that you know that aren't monetary lord they're not material things they are yeah being able to use our voices and and use our study and and use 
the things that we do to be able to share our blessings with others and, and just tell them about the good news of Jesus yes, and yes. to do. And so thank you for continuing to, to just overflow our cups with, with being able yes. to share that. And so Lord, we just, we love you so much and we thank you. We lift all these prayers up to you, those out there that we don't know of Lord, we know so many people are in need of prayer and, families that are that are in despair and lord we just lift all of that up to you we we love you we thank you for all that you do all that you've done and all that you're going to do in our lives and we pray this in the strong and mighty name of jesus amen and thank god amen thank the lord amen Amen. Amen. all right ladies well let me save this and stop share there we go okay all right well have a wonderful wonderful week you too. Saturday. See you Saturday. Woo, Saturday's going to be good. <laughs> I'll see you Thursday, Tim. Thursday? Oh, yes, Thursday. You don't have to call me. I know now. Oh, oh boy. Yeah. Okay. Now, I heard that. What, what, wait, I wait. That. Maybe you should. <laughs> Three o'clock. Three o'clock. Okay. All right. All right, All right everybody. Later. Have a good night. Okay. All right. Thank you you too. Bye. Bye. Bye now. Bless you. Lois, Lois Diane, say goodbye. Bye. Bye now. Okay.